then we went to a separate room and waited for about five, ten minutes, and then we were summoned to go back into the, into the uh, room where the commission was meeting, and then we heard the decision. It's hard for me not to get emotional when I think about it, it because it was so many years in the making. It was a very arduous process, but it was, it was an incredible moment. My name is Timothy Shinoni, and this is Tea Time at the Seminary, a show where we have conversations with Orthodox Christians all while drinking our favorite cup of tea. Our guest today is the Dean of the Seminary and also a professor here. Today I am interviewing the very Reverend Archimandrite, Father Patapios. Thank you, Father Patapios, for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Timothy. Pleasure yes. to be here. Yes, of course. So in front of you, you have three flavors of tea. So my first question to you is, what tea would you like to drink? Now, the first one is Earl Grey, mm -hmm. the middle one is green tea, and the one next to me is lemon ginger. And you can choose which one you'd like to drink. Earl Grey. Earl Grey. So Earl Grey is that one right there next Wonderful. to you. Okay. I'm going to choose green tea. What is your favorite thing about being a professor at Spots and also being the dean of Spots? I love teaching. Um, I find it very stimulating to work with these young people. They're, they're, they're very enthusiastic and they're very diligent. Um, and over the years, I've become more accustomed to, to taking classes. It was difficult at first because I hadn't taught for over many years. But I think uh, any, of, any teacher will tell you that, that in, you, teaching is the best way of learning a subject. And it really is true. You know, I, I spend a lot of time going over the text that I cover in classes. And I've learned an awful lot over the last few years. And things that I, I didn't really have a very close acquaintance with, texts that I wasn't that only had a nodding, nodding familiarity with, now I feel much more comfortable with. And, now to the point where I can go just go over my lecture notes and just make some embellishments, and it's much less work than it used to be, um, which is very satisfying. I'm doing that right now with the class I'm teaching, which is with patristics too. But it's very stimulating, and it's it's um, it's, it's very rewarding. I mean, a teacher really is. Um, it's, it takes a lot of time, but the time is well spent. And uh, luckily, the students are very 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 enthusiastic, and the, the classroom discussions are, are usually quite lively. Um, so. So I'm very, very happy indeed to be, to be doing that. It's, it's given me a chance to, to relearn things that I had learned many years ago and pick, picked up sometimes decades later, but it, it's, it's, it's been very, very fulfilling for me. Um, and in terms of being dean, um, it doesn't come so easily to me because I've never done an administration prior to being appointed dean here, but I've had to learn the job as I went on. And of course, the first five years, <laughs> We spent most of our time working towards accreditation, um, and I, uh, it's, it's been well worth it. <laughs> Obviously, it was necessary for us to get accredited. We're required to do that, but but um, it, I learned an awful lot about it, administration in the course of that time, and, and um, the, the process of assessment, um, which is a major part, actually, really the core of, of, of accreditation, is assessing ourselves as a school. Are we effective in terms of teaching? Um, are we doing a good job? Are we our students? turning out as we would like them to turn out. And there's, there's a lot of work involved in doing that, but it's, uh, and, um, but it, I've learned an awful lot from that. And what's your favorite class to teach here at the seminary? That's a difficult question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, it depends, I think right now I would say patristics, mm. but I love teaching philosophy too. Um, I've taught ancient philosophy. I've, I've done a variety of co courses. I've done, in initially I, I did New Testament and um, even Old Testament. Um, some dogmatics, um, apologetics, but I, I think I finally found my true home in, in combination of patristics and, and philosophy. And also, I, I do I like teaching classical civilization. I've done that before for a number of years, but now someone else is doing that, which I'm happy about. It's, it's freed me up to do other work, so I'm very, very content with that. The next question is, who is your favorite church father and why? <sighs> it's, it depends whom I'm teaching or reading, that's usually my favorite. If they're all my favorites, so it's very hard to choose. But I right now I say St. Gregory of Nyssa. And the reason is that he's such a diverse figure. I mean, he, he covers so many different areas of Orthodox theology. Um, he deals with, with apologetics, catechetics, dogmatic theology, 
scriptural exegesis, um, life after death, um, asceticism, I mean, you name it, he, he touches on just about every area. Um, and I, I, I would probably give you a different answer maybe in the following term, or mm. we get term after that, depending <laughs> on who my teaching. I, I'm just engrossed and absorbed in whoever I'm trying to, whose, whose teachings I'm trying to pass on to the students. Um, and uh, St. Gregory is particularly a, a favorite of mine. His, his, um, his Greek can be difficult, but oddly enough, the work we're reading right now in patristics is a catechetical discourse, and it's actually not that hard to follow. And it's, uh, it's a manual for catechists, very practical sort of aim it's, 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 it covers an enormous amount of theological ground in the process, but his, it's designed as a, as a manual for people teaching catechumens or inquiries into orthodoxy. It has a very, very um, great relevance even to us. A lot of the questions that, that he deals with are still questions people raise today, so it, it feels very fresh, even though it was written in the late 4th century. Mm. Uh, uh, it's an absorbing and engrossing work, and I, I just, I've read it a number of times, and I just every time I read it, I find something else in it. That's true of all classical works. But there's always so, so much depth that you always find some new idea, new thought, new angle when you read it another time. You know. Mm. So it's, it's, but I've I've always been very fond of Saint Gregory. He's also because he's generally considered to be the most philosophically inclined of the fathers, and I have a background in philosophy, and which I love teaching as well. Um, and I, I can see so many echoes of, of Plato and, and Aristotle too. In his writings, I, I, I tell the students, they just leap out from the page. I say, that's, that's Plato right there. And let's mm. see how it's been transformed in a Christian context. Um, so it's, it's just amazing. I see all those, those parallels. Um, and that's, that, that gives a sharper edge to our teaching of philosophy. We want to try to make sure that as time goes on, the students understand why we're studying philosophy. It's in order to help us understand the Church Fathers, who had that profound background in, mm. in philosophy and generally in, in classical Greek culture. Mm. Uh, literature and, and, and so on. Um, well, that's so funny. You actually kind of answered what my next question was going to be, is why, okay. why do we teach philosophy at the seminary? Because a lot of mm. people might wonder uh, why you're teaching people about you know, Plato and Socrates when they weren't you know, church fathers or right. even Christians. Well, and you sort of answered it in a way. St. Justin, the philosopher, uh, uh, picks, uh, picks out both uh, Socrates and Herac Heraclitus as people who are Christians before Christ, as it were, who lived according to the Logos, or lived with the Logos, they, they, were, they were somewhat enlightened in a, in a certain way um, by the Logos, even though they were pagan Greeks, because they were searching for the truth. And, and it, that, that's a kind of a metaphor for all of us. You know, we're all searching for the truth, and the philosophers help us to get to that stage. It, it's a preparatory kind of um, learning. You, know, you, you learn that as a background, and with that background, you can understand the Fathers much better. Um, you, you can read the Fathers without without that background, but you, it, it's, you have a much richer, more wider, more expansive um, view of them, and, and you, you're much, much better able to, to um, get in tune, as it were, with their, their way of thinking, their phronema, their, their mentality, their outlook. It's a word very hard to translate into English, the, the phronema of the fathers, the phronema ton pateron. It's, it's how the fathers think, the, the mind of the fathers, the common mind, and, and the philosophy helps us to, to um, prepare for that. Um, and the teaching, the study of literature too. You know, Saint Basil has a whole uh, um, address to the youth um, about the the value um, to be derived from reading pagan literature. He, he particularly puts forth the image of the bee. You know, a bee takes the nectar and discards what is what is worthless, just picks out what's useful. And so, when reading pagan literature, and that could apply to secular literature in our, in our own day, you you take what's good and leave aside what's not separate, what's not salutary, what's not helpful, what it might even be inimical to, to the spirit of Christianity. But, but you, you get a far more breadth and, and, and from reading that literature. It's, it's also, a, it's, 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 he compares it to um, training for, for athletic contest. You know, it's mm. the, you, you, this is a proper duty. This, this is the, the, the progymnasot, as a Greek, uh, use the Greek term, these, the warm-up exercises. And you, with that in mind, then you can understand Holy Scripture. Of course, you can, understand, you can understand scripture without that, but it's, it's part of your general education. It gives a, a well, it helps to form people in a well rounded way um, and makes it much, much easier to, to understand what the fathers were getting at. Um, so, that, that's a work that's very dear to my heart. This Dr. John Petropoulos and I have started translating that oh, yeah, yeah. into English. We're going to 
um, would give us a new translation and commentary on that. Hope we get that published in the next few years. Um, it'll, it'll be very good for the seminary if we can get that published. Um, oh, that'll be and exciting. It'll be, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's basically a, uh, it's one of the textbooks we were for the, for, the, for the students. We require everyone to read it before they come, so they understand our, our approach from the, from the very outset. You know. mm. We emphasize that the classical education, which, which is so valuable. It's, I, I had that the blessing of receiving the education myself, and I'm very happy to be able to pass it on to to a new generation. I'm very excited about that, and and want them to be excited too, and, and it um, it helps them to 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 read to understand the Greek. Of course, you study the Greek language, you understand the fathers better by reading in the original or the Latin. But um, th th this, there's no substitute for having a classical education first, and then going to study theology. It's, it's very very helpful. Earlier, you talked about um, difficulty. So, um, of course, you have many students who will ask you very tough questions sometimes. Yes, and I'm sure sometimes true. you're not always able to answer immediately. So, who do you go to when uh, you have questions about uh, things you're teaching sometimes? Uh, I would ask Bishop Xantius or Father Gregory or Father Cosmos, my, you know, my, my superiors and my colleagues. Um, and I have a wide variety of resources I can, I can draw upon. Um, there's dictionaries, encyclopedias, and other, you know, Written written works that I can I can refer to. I mean, I'm, I sometimes I tell the students, I can't answer that question right away, but I'll think about it, and next time I'll try to address it. That came up the other day. In fact, there was a question about the the nature of the soul, um, and I said, well, I don't really know exactly how to answer, but I'll look into it and hopefully have a some some kind of answer for the next class. So I have I have all kinds of resources I can I can refer to. Mm. And that's good, too, because I remember when I was in college, a lot of the times I'd go to the professors, ask them the question, and then they would say, well, I'll get back to you. Yeah. And they never got back to me. Well, <laughs> I, I do tell the students, you know, if, if I offer to, to, to send them an article or something to read, please remind me because I forget sometimes. So I, I do want to, like to pass things on to supplement the, the, the readings that they assign for the courses. Mm. And, uh, but, yes, I, 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 there are plenty of people I can ask, uh, and, or Dr. Petropoulos or Father Yergi. You know, uh, other people who are much wiser than I am <laughs> know much more than I do. <laughs> far, yeah. far, far more um, of a profounder grasp of the Orthodox tradition than I do. But there's plenty of, of, of help people to help out here, and that's a nice thing. Well, Father, while you're taking a sip of the tea, um, well, actually, you can uh, let us know what you think of it. It's Earl Grey. Wonderful. Very good. One of my absolute <laughs> favorites. It never fails. Yeah. So did you have, um, I'll ask you kind of a, a question about tea, I guess. So did you have um, tea time growing up? Oh yes, it was part of, way a part of our daily way of life. <laughs> mm. Eleven o'clock, we had elevenths, which meant you know, coffee and, and, and snacks, um, and then tea time around about three or four o'clock, afternoon tea. Mm. Yeah, and not a, not it was not a very formal event, just just a bit of a cup of tea and some, some cookies or biscuits that we call oh, them in yeah. England. Oh <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but yeah, it's, it's 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 part and parcel of being of British life. Yeah, yeah. and Earl Grey is usually what you would go for. Even oh, when I, younger? I had. Various kinds. I don't think I actually had Earl Grey when I was younger. Oddly enough, it was that was a rather special blend. Oh. Now it's easily available, but I don't remember having it when I was younger. It was just basically a black tea. Yeah, but it it was fine. Hmm. Mm. Very but good. Yeah, <laughs> then I discovered coffee <laughs> as I got older. <laughs> but yeah, I've always I, always been fond of tea. Yeah, I well, I typically go amounts. for. I remember actually when we visit the monastery. Um, you're uh, actually are you the guest master officially at the monastery? Well, sort of, yeah. 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 So when we go to the monastery, you always ask us, uh, "Would you like uh, coffee or tea?" Oh, I yeah. Usually sure. say, I usually say coffee. Yeah. Um, but I like tea too. You know, <laughs> I'll have yeah. tea every once in a while. Sure. So, all right, I'll take a sip of this as well, just so I can yeah, taste it because uh, we're almost at snack time. Uh -huh. So. So we just had tea time, but now it is snack time at the seminary. So, Father, we have in front of you shortbread cookies. Fig Newtons and Graham crackers. Which one would you like to try? Hard to choose. I th it's a toss between the shortbread and the Fig Newtons, but I think I will be faithful to my ethnic heritage and opt for the shortbread. Shortbread. All right, yeah. there you go. And it actually is the one near you anyway, so you'll Perfect. start next to you. Most convenient. <laughs> um, actually, I'll ask you real quick. So why did you choose uh, shortbread? Even though you sort of just mentioned why, but maybe elaborate on that. I don't, haven't had it for quite a while. We don't. It's not. I mean, you can, you can get it in the United States, but it's not quite so. Commonly available. At least we don't at the monastery have it very frequently, so it's a, it's a nice <laughs> treat. It was very growing up. I had it all the time. It was just very very easy to to, to find it in supermarkets. But can you talk a little bit about um, your trip to the ABHE, which is the Association for Biblical Higher Education, right? And their headquarters, I believe, are in Orlando, Florida. That's correct. 
Uh, you visited them uh, this year and last year, but last year in particular was a very historical visit. Yes. Um, can you explain to the audience why last year was a big deal when you visited the ABHU? Well, Gabriel Asgarian, our registrar, and I had to appear, along with Bishop Xentis, remotely by Zoom before the Commission on Accreditation. That they had to, uh, they, the, the, um, we had done everything we needed to do, we submitted all the documentation for the self study, um, nearly 100 pages long, and various other supporting documents, and they'd read all this material. They had some extra questions, things that weren't quite so clear. We answered all the questions successfully in a way that was um, appreciated by, by the commissioners. They, 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 we, 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 we filled in some gaps there and clarified some, some ambiguities. And they seemed very satisfied with the answers we gave. And we just, I suppose it was about 20 minutes long altogether, the actual interview. And then we went to a separate room and waited for about five, 10 minutes. And then we were summoned to go back into the, into the uh, room where the commission was meeting. And then we heard the decision. And it's, it's hard for me not to get emotional when I think about it, it because it was so many years in the making and there's so much I mean, hours and hours have been spent on collecting the documentation, reviewing our performance, um, interviewing people, getting data, analyzing, processing the data, uh, making sure that we, we'd answer the questions uh, satisfactorily, we, we were in compliance with the, with the various elements in the, in the 11 standards for accreditation. It was a very arduous process, but it was, it was an incredible mm -hmm. moment. All the people at ABH are exceptionally wonderful people, They've always been incredibly supportive of us, and they, they want to help us succeed. They've always said, we're not trying to catch you out. We want to help you get to your goal of accreditation. So, but no matter how helpful and kind they are, which they are, um, <laughs> it's, there's no way of getting around. That's, that's a tense moment, mm. and things could have gone differently. But we were, we were cautiously, op cautiously optimistic that the result would be uh, as we expected and hoped for and, and been praying for, and it was, in fact, so, as you recall. So that was a... Actually, the, the 2019, I was there, my first visit to Orlando, and uh, circumstances, that, as you know, were different then because my partner, blessed memory, just proposed. Um, mm. So I was on my own, literally on my own. But I wasn't, because that same day, the Metropolitan's funeral was, was conducted. It was a feast of St. Photius. So I had St. Photius praying for us, his eminence, and the good wishes and the Condolences and the, and the immense kindness of the people, all of whom, without exception, com com consoled it in our overall loss and acted with great love and support for me. No, no, because I'm, I was on my own, <laughs> essentially. So I never forgotten that. That was that was the first step, candidacy. That was that we had to get candidacy before we could get accreditation. So that was um, that was a very emotional moment too. When when when, we, when I heard the decision, I was just. Someone said, your face just lit up. But it did, because I, you know, it's an Photius day. <laughs> it's synonymous with light, and of course, everything just clicked as soon as that decision was read. And of course, that wasn't the final step. That was, that was a stage on the journey. The accreditation journey is a long, long drawn out journey, and it's, it's, it's many twists and turns on the way. But um, fortunately, we had much wonderful guidance from everybody, the ABHE, or, or the, or the uh, liaison, Dr. Shane Wood, always been a great friend to us and, and um, all, all kinds of people gave us wonderful advice and, and helped us to get to that goal. So I can't speak highly enough about the ABG. They're just an amazing group of people. Mm. And then we had a chance to go to our parish in Benel, St. John of Kronstadt, ah. which is a wonderful community. Yes, so actually, uh, that's my next question. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I must be yes. reading your mind here. Yeah, my next question was, um, what, what are your thoughts on, uh, well, just the state of Florida? and um, the mission in Benel, St. John of Kronstadt. I had never been to Florida prior to 2019. I, I've been in the United States since 1983. Um, actually, more than, more than half my life has been spent here. Um, but for some reason, I never went to Florida. And perhaps I was apprehensive about alligators. <laughs> or something, <laughs> but uh, but I, it's kind of silly to say that. But Florida is a very diverse, uh, richly diverse um, ecologically in terms of its urban, urban areas. It's, it's, I was very impressed, actually, what I saw. Um, and uh, we had a chance to visit the beautiful historic town of St. Augustine on the coast. Oh, I love it. The oldest it town in, in, yeah. in the United States, 15, effectively 1546 or 
It was around there. Six, 16th, mid 16th century. Yeah. And a beautiful, beautiful little town. And of course, there's a famous uh, St. Photius Orthodox shrine mm. there. So, and this year we, we visited the shrine for a second time, and we were very warmly welcomed um, by, by, the, by the lady who was the curator of the shrine. And uh, it's a very nice visit. I remember when I traveled to Florida with you, I think you mentioned you really wanted to see flamingos. Oh. Uh, did you ever see a flamingo? In no, Florida? I don't think I ever did. Never did? No. <laughs> How about an alligator? No. No. Okay. I saw, saw manatees. <laughs> manatees. I remember that, actually. Remember last year that. we saw manatees. Yeah. It was hard to see them because they were very, very um, shy creatures. We, we, we just about saw them below the surface of the water, but it was hard to, hard to detect them. Mm. They don't come out during the day very readily. Yeah. I'm going to assume um, they don't have those in England. Or <laughs> no. Oh, no. Just in zoos, maybe. Just in zoos. Yeah. No, <laughs> no flamingos, no alligators. But All right. So we're nearing the end of the show. So I'm going to ask you uh, the last question. And this is kind of a, I guess it's sort of a big question. Uh, you can go in many directions with this one, mm -hmm. um, but I'll ask it anyway. Uh, what is your philosophy of life? Hmm. I don't think I've been asked that question in quite that form. Oh, really? It's not recently. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I have thought about it on and off um, quite, quite often, occurs to me. Um, well, it, it's, it's rooted in the um, the classical tradition as transformed and baptized and uh, elevated by the holy fathers of our church um, but it, it's 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 rooted in, in, in antiquity but but it's very contemporary um, pursuit of the virtues um, um, to to change oneself and so seraphim says famously save yourself and a thousand around you it will be saved so you oh. work on yourself to acquire the virtues, and um, that is a is a pathway towards the ultimate the vision of God, as Saint Gregory, the theologian, so memorably puts it, praxis epivasis theorias. Wonderfully crisp formulation of this point. It's just three words: praxis. That's the practical carrying out of the commandments, the the, the ascetical side of, of the faith, is a stepping stone, literally, to the vision of God. That's that, that, that sums it all up, really. That, I suppose I could say that's my philosophy. Um, but, the, but the virtues are anchored in, in, the, in the classical and the broader heritage that we, we've in, we, we, we're gifted with and that um, we can draw from so richly. It's not just the classical. The, the, the whole Western heritage, too, the, 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 um, the great conversation of, of um, as they talk about the great books, you know, <laughs> of, the, of Western civilization, we can draw upon that, too. But... Give it an orthodox angle, orthodox uh, approach, which is very important because it's 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 somewhat lopsided the way it's often presented. It, there's orthodoxy is pretty much excluded from that, the canon of the great books, but I like to see us put the church fathers where they belong in the center of it all, and and of course you include the other authors too because they all had a part part to play in in uh, the growth of human discovery and learning. But but always it has an orientation towards towards our journey to God. Um, to, 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 to saving our souls, and saving hopefully the saving the souls of those around us. It's, it's uh, we, we we draw upon this this rich resources, but for for a, for a truly for a divine goal end. You know. But that's very Aristotelian, having an end, mm. and we don't deliberate about the end. We know what the end is: is to become one with God, to be deified. To put it very simply, so um, that's always a guiding guiding light behind everything we do. We don't figure out what, what is our end. We know what our end is. We know what God is calling us. He's called us to be holy, even as he is holy. It's a very, very lofty, sublime command, very difficult to fulfill, but that's our calling. Um, however, we end up actualizing that in our own lives. Um, but but that, that's it. And <laughs> if, if we have in any, any, any way a sort of um, union with God, that'll be some sense of seeing, but... So it's not, not his essence, only his energies, but um, but that's nonetheless a great deal. Um, but become partakers of the divine nature, as St. Peter says in his epistle, second epistle. Uh, that, that's another way of summarizing it. You know. um, so that's my, my philosophy of life in, in a nutshell, but there's much more to it than that, many more aspects <laughs> of it. <laughs> 
Thank you so much for watching Tea Time at the Seminary. If you like what you watched today, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel called St. Photius Orthodox Theological Seminary. And usually at the end, I say cheers, but today I'm going to ask Father Protapios to say it instead. Cheers. <laughs>